I did it uh, more often as time went on, you know, okay. and developed a full-on addiction. And when I was in high school, it peaked. I used to watch every day, maybe four times a day, five times a day even. I would get home at around 2 p.m. And then I had all the time in the world to, to basically watch porn. Hey everyone, welcome to Filling the Void. This is your host, the Celibate Yogi. In today's podcast, we're going to hear the story of a college student from Romania and his story and struggle with the porn addiction and the porn trap and how we help him get out of this trap. Yeah, please tell me a little bit about yourself, kind of, you know, um, are you in uh, school? Are you, like, what's been your journey with PMO? All right, what uh, what would you like to know first? Uh, yeah, so first of all, like, when did you learn that, well, first of all, how did you get into this addiction? How did you, um, how did you get started? And when did you realize you had a problem? Uh, well, I started when I was maybe 10, you know, like any kid, I was curious and important. I did it uh, more often as time went on, you know, okay. and developed a full-on addiction. And when I was in high school, it peaked. I used to watch every day, maybe four times a day, five times a day even. I would get home at around 2 p.m. And then I had all the time in the world to, to basically watch porn. Okay. And so how many years did this, did this go on for until you realized you had a problem? Well, I started with, I was 10, I'm almost 20 now, so 9 to 10 years. And I realized that was a big problem around a year and a half ago. Okay. So you were probably around, what, 19, 18 and a half, 19? Yeah, 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 exactly. So what did you, how did you first tackle it? What was your process in trying to quit this addiction? Well, I found out about the NoFap subreddit, and I read a lot about uh, porn addiction. And you know, it doesn't work. I used, I tried to use willpower, and I failed again and again. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know any other uh, thing to do or try, other than just distract yourself, try cold showers, push-ups. But uh, sooner or later, I would end up doing it again. Right. Did you also spend your time um, reading about like the brain science of it, your brain on forums? Yes, I did. I did. Uh, I read books about it. I read about it on forums and uh, pretty much nothing helped. Okay. I read about other people's experiences and how they escaped and I tried their methods and again, nothing, no results. I never, uh, I've never been free for more than 14 days. That's what, uh, that was my peak. What were some of these other methods? I know you mentioned cold showers, push-ups, willpower. Were there other other methods that you read about from these success stories? I tried to rationalize it. Every time I would get an urge, I would uh, I would go outside or sit in the bed and really think about it, really think if, really think about if I wanted to do it, how bad it would feel, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, it didn't really work. Sooner or later, I would end up. Uh, back in it again yes i think that's quite common um you know people think that they can rationalize their way out of it but it's Mm -hmm. it's like dealing with a school dealing with a bully dealing with um dealing with someone who's coming to your home and threatening you you can't negotiate with with yeah exactly um okay so tell me uh so if none of these things worked tell me a bit about how you came across um a different way of doing things and, and kind of what led what led you to me? Well, I've heard about the book. I used to read other books about about uh, quitting porn, and I found out about this one, the Easy Peasy Method. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't read it. I listened to it online on YouTube, mm-hmm. and uh, it didn't work because uh, as I was listening, I didn't really think about what uh, what I was listening to. You know, the information came in in the in one year and out the other. And then uh, I found out, uh, found out about the subreddit, and I asked you to 
to put me in the Discord server. Yes. So have you tried to apply any of the ideas that, that you read on the Discord server from everything that I've, anything that I've shared or what others have shared? How has that been working, if at all? Yes, I've tried. I've tried. I read your book two times, but uh, after a few days, after maybe like five to six days of having absolutely no problem with uh, the PMO trap, it would seem like I would forget the the steps or I'd forget everything I've learned and I would go into auto mode and again fall into the trap. Okay. It happened like two or three times. Yeah, this is quite common. Um, sometimes the the programming takes over and you, you, you don't even know what you're doing and you end up doing it. Um, so tell me a bit about that. You know, in what circumstances or what situations do you end up relapsing? Is it is it when you're bored, you're sitting at home? Like, tell me about that whole about that whole situation. It's mostly when I'm uh, stressed. Okay. When I'm stressed, when I'm thinking about something that I've done and I shouldn't have done, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about upcoming tests, exams, uh, anything to related to university. And sometimes boredom, but uh, it's very rarely. Mm -hmm. It's mostly stress. Mostly stress. Do you find that um, you do this when you are, um, does it always start off straight with PMOing or do you end up on you know YouTube, Instagram, other websites, and then slowly um, you, you slide your way down to, the, to these tube sites? How does it happen for you? The second way you described, I'm starting to kind of look for images or something like that. And then uh, I stumble across something that's more not safe for work. And I just tell myself, well, if you've seen it already, well, might yeah. as well do it. Might as well finish the job. Okay. So it's almost like um, um, when you're stressed, you go on the internet, maybe you go on Reddit, YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, exactly. Other random sites. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't quite it doesn't quite satisfy you, so you start sliding down towards more extreme content, the NSFW stuff, mm -hmm. not safe for work stuff. Okay, you start with small steps. That's how I do it. This is also once again really common. I think for a lot of users, um, they don't. It's not just a, a PMO addiction that they have, a porn addiction that they have, but they have an internet addiction. They have a smartphone device addiction. Um, they they think that um, just like with porn, they think that these digital devices, these social media sites, these um, you know clickbait type of sites will help them relieve them of their boredom. They think Reddit will help them deal with stress. Or Reddit will help them deal with boredom. But if anything, um, it continues to create a void because no content is good enough and your brain continues to look for the next hit and the next hit. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad you're, I, I want you to be very conscious and I want you to recognize that, that you're not just working with porn addiction, but you're dealing with internet addiction or smartphone addiction. Do you usually do this on your, smart, on your phone or on your, on your computer? On, a, on my computer, I don't computer. really use the phone. Okay, so it's it's really just an, um, the, the bigger thing we're trying to tackle here is an internet addiction um, as well. So, you know, our goal here today is to, first of all, thank you for sharing all of this information with me. Um, it does seem that, you know, PMO helps you deal with stress. So, you know, tell me some of the reasons why um, you want to quit. What makes you want to quit? Well, you get, you get nothing out of it. You know, my head hurts. Uh, your confidence drops. You can't really focus on studying and that uh, really hurts me. Mm -hmm. It only brings bad stuff. That's why I want to, to quit. Ever since I read about uh, other people's uh, experiences while uh, escaping i've never stopped trying mm -hmm. i can't stop trying i have to i have to quit that's what i tell myself yes um it, it's it's funny you say some of these things that you can't focus on studying do you end up um watching um pmo to actually help you focus on studying 
as no, well? No, I don't. Okay. It doesn't help me. I have some stress, all right? So then I relieve it with porn. In fact, I don't relieve it, but I think I do. Mm -hmm. and uh and then i can concentrate yeah so it just adds up i i don't do anything but uh, uh but when i use it you know i just go on autopilot mm -hmm. you don't really think straight anymore isn't that isn't that funny that um you can't focus on studying because you because you um, watch porn and yet the very solution to that, you know, to help you concentrate, is to end up watching porn so that you can. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle, exactly. Um, your head hurts, and then you watch it, and then once again, after a little while, your head starts hurting again. So you watch it, and then your head hurts even more. Um, um, it's it's the the trap is quite um, quite sticky. You know, it it draws you in, and it it, it looks as sweet as honey. But then you land on it and you start realizing that it's actually poison. Um, tell me a bit about kind of your internal um, story about this. Do you have any um, any like religious teachings that that this also affects? Do you have like a religious background that which is which is another factor in making you want to quit? Is there any anything in your family? Are you in a relationship? Um, Tell me about tell me about that. Well, another factor is that I'm uh, I'm an Orthodox Christian, being from Romania. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a big believer, and it really feels bad doing it. You know, it doesn't feel moral at all. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like that. That's how should a man act. Yes. In any religion or circumstance. Of course. Um, are you in a relationship with, with anyone or are you single right now? No, no, I'm single. Okay. Single right now. Um, okay. Um, and the, the final, one of the final questions I had for you was, um, is there like, what feelings do you have about this whole situation? Is there guilt? Is there self-hatred? Is there, um, like resentment you know how do you feel do you feel okay do you feel numb like what's your what's your feeling about all of this uh well after i use it i feel numb exactly like you said i feel shame because i did it mm -hmm. and i feel like i don't really see the way out right now mm -hmm. i tell myself that there someday i will escape and i won't look back but i don't really see it you know coming in the near future and this makes me relapse again that's another factor yes that's one of the one of the big beliefs that um, is quite common with a lot of users the way they say that well now that i'm a user i can mm -hmm. never stop being a user um absolutely <sighs> okay I, I mean you have some very powerful reasons for wanting to quit and yet you cannot quit so tell me about the benefits you get out of it and i know you said that it helps you deal with stress it helps you deal with boredom but you know tell me just tell me a lot tell me more about that well other than the fact that it kind of relieves the porn the the stress excuse me yeah. uh, it gives me that uh, feeling of of thrill when you look for it you know mm -hmm. you don't actually seek the the orgasm at mm -hmm. least i don't really feel like seeking it i feel more like uh, i feel more thrill when i go and watch and find a quote-unquote uh, perfect uh, video or image or anything like that you know you play on the on the red line yes um that's quite good. Would you say that's the primary benefit you get out of it? Are there other situations in which you use, um, um, like, for example, um, uh, do you use porn to um, deal with perhaps not having a girlfriend or uh, you see your friends being in relationships and you're not and you kind of feel any resentment or is there are there particular circumstances, feelings, that sort of thing that that make you well, want to see? Uh, 
the girlfriend problem doesn't really happen often. I mean, I think it happened once or twice, but uh, then I stopped caring about that. I don't think of any, I can't think of any other way other than the, the stress thing and the, the thrill. The thrill, okay. Excellent. So yeah, this was a lot of information that I wanted to gather. And now what we're going to try and do is work on a few of these beliefs you have, because what a few things I want to say, um, number one is that I am glad that you don't think that there is a, a moral defect in you, that you've fallen into this trap. I think a lot of users feel that there's something wrong with them. There's a character defect in them. That um, that they're flawed, that they are um, uh, beyond repair, because they have fallen into this trap. And the fact of the matter is, even if you had a hundred percent willpower, even if you had a perfect character, you unless you realize that this was a trap, you would have fallen into it. And the image that comes to mind is that of a bee. You know, a bee is floating around. It's flying in a garden. It's going from flower to flower. It's there to collect pollen. It's there to collect nectar. And it sees this, this plant. It looks really beautiful. It looks gorgeous. And it um, feels like there's a lot of pollen, a lot of nectar in it. And it lands on this flower. And before it knows it, it's already sliding down, slipping, and falling into the trap. Because it's, um, it's a carnivorous flower, it's there to devour these insects and actually eat them. Um, so even if you would have had perfect willpower, if you didn't recognize that this was a trap, you would, would have fallen into it. Um, so don't ever go down the route where you tell yourself that there's something wrong with me for, for being here. Um, you are here because the trap has been designed in the way to capture a lot of people. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the tactics that people use to get out of it, it are what you said. They try and do the cold showers, the, the push-ups, and, and all that sort of stuff. And they that, that's just like the insect struggling and, and fighting really hard to get out of the prison. And it's banging up against each wall. And all it really has to do is open the gates and you can walk right out uh, because there were no keys on the gates at all. It just thinks that there are keys to keeping you in the prison. And that's what we're going to try and work on today, to help you realize that there have been no keys that have kept you locked in this prison. You can actually escape right now. So what I'd like to do is work on some of these beliefs that you've told me about, and um, we'll spend a bit of time on it. The cause of stress, the cause of boredom, the cause of all of these negative feelings that we have are false beliefs. When we hold false beliefs, we cause stress in our lives. And when we cause stress in our lives, we end up using porn, other addictions, whether it be internet addiction or binging on sugar, binging on Netflix, watching TV shows all night long, all that sort of stuff to fill the void. And all we really have to do is look at the beliefs. And if we can get rid of these false beliefs, then it becomes uh, much easier for you to say, well, no, I don't really even need to PMO at all. Um, so a few beliefs that came to my mind as you were talking is you said that uh, someday I will escape, but I just don't really see it. I don't actually know if I'll be able to escape. Uh, would you think that's a powerful belief that that's overriding all of this? Um, that's one belief that I, under, that I was able to kind of pull out from, from everything you said. The other belief that I think you might have is... Um, if I don't take care of my tests, my exams, et cetera, I'm going to explode. Um, you know, t tell me what sounds like a much more, um, what belief seems bigger to you? Is it the, the stronger belief is the one that uh, I won't escape easily and I won't escape very, very soon in the near okay. future. Okay. So let's work on this one particular belief and let's see if it's actually true and let's see if we can drop it. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, and they're going to sound very silly. They, they might seem even a bit basic, but uh, humor me and, and answer along. Uh, you and I both know the answers, but just for the sake of this, it helps to answer it out loud. All right. So this belief you have that I cannot escape from this trap. 
Is it true? No. No. Okay. And you you absolutely know that it's not true. Is that correct? Yes, I know it's a false belief. Okay. So tell me, what do you end up doing? How do you end up feeling when you hold on to the belief that I can't really escape? Well, you really can't escape. That's how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So you feel trapped because of this belief? Yeah, exactly. You feel trapped. You feel like there is no way out, at least not now. Okay. Um, so if you know this belief is false, you know that this belief cannot absolutely be true, and it's making you feel trapped in this way, I want you to imagine, just for this moment, you can, you can stop imagining it afterwards, but just for this moment, imagine what would happen if you didn't believe that I am trapped and I can never escape. What would change for you? Well, it would become much easier to follow the steps in the book, follow the easy peasy method and finally get get this over with. Yes. So we know that this belief is not true. We know that this belief is making you miserable. And you know that your life would be a lot easier and escaping from the PMO trap would be a lot easier if you no longer had this belief. Then why hold on to it? Well, I really don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to do something for me. Do you have like a pencil or a pen close to you that you can put in your hand? Yeah. Or a set of pens? Just, just Got the pen. Okay, perfect. So I want you to hold your this pen in your hand and just let it roll around in your in your hand. All right. I'm doing so, that. So this is what a belief is like. It's a thought. A belief is just a thought. And um, it's, it's not your hand. It's just something you hold in your hand. But what we do with time and what we do with brainwashing that we experience is, is we start putting our fist around this pen and we start clutching it. We start grabbing it. And we end up holding it tighter and tighter and tighter. And this is what causes the stress. And this is what makes you believe that this belief is me. It's what makes the belief more and more and more real. And I want you to actually clutch this pen really tightly. And I want you to I'm hold it even tighter and tighter and tighter. Do you see the stress that it's creating in your hand? Yes. My hand uh, starts to hurt. Exactly. And this is, this is the stress. This is the added stress that holding on to a belief like this is causing in your life. You know, everyone goes through exam stress or test um, uh, uh, anxiety or university, figuring out their career, all that kind of stuff. But you holding on to this belief has been making this, creating all of this intense and extra stress in your life. It's what's made you believe that, well, there's no way out. And all you really have to do is open your hand and turn your hand upside down so the pen can fall to the ground. How easy is that to do? Extremely easy. So that's what a belief is. It's just a choice. The belief is not you. The belief is something that's in your hand. The belief is something you hold within you. And you can choose to drop it whenever you want, just like you choose to drop the pen. And so in this moment, as best you can, can you choose to just drop the pen, drop the belief that you can't escape from this? Yes. Yes, I can. Good. It was just that easy. Now, of course, at this point, uh, your mind might start kicking and screaming again, and it might tell you that, but hold on, that isn't actually true. Um, that this is just a trick that, you know, I, I, I'm actually going to, I still am a user. I still am addicted. And this is a trap of the mind. This is a trap that the, the porn monster uh, makes you believe. You have been brainwashed over a very, over 10 years with each, each time you use porn, you have strengthened this belief. You have made this um, bully stronger and stronger and stronger. So now you go on the playground of your, of your mind 
and this bully comes up to you and says, well, give me all your money. Do what I tell you to do. It beats you up. It makes you go down this PMO trap. And so what we have to do is reverse this belief. What we have to do is tell ourselves the truth again and again and again so that we can counteract this false brainwashing that we have. So I want you to try and think of what might be a better or a more truthful belief to hold instead of believing that I'm stuck in this forever. What might be a more truthful statement to believe? Uh, the fact that you can easily, you can really drop it right now. Yes, that's really good. Don't even one. look at it anymore. So a good phrase might be, "I can drop this whenever I want." Um, I just made that up. Maybe you can think of something else that might work better for you. Um, wh what did you say? What was the phrase you used? I actually really like that. Uh, I I can drop this whenever I want. Or... I can drop this whenever I want. I can drop this whenever I want. It is easy to drop. And I'm this. not not even gonna look at it anymore. I'm not even going to look at it anymore. Look at it anymore. See, these statements are wonderful because they are the actual truth. And what you have to do is tell yourself the truth, so that when the so that when you go on the playground and the bully starts walking towards you, you have your friends right next to you. Uh, you know, earlier on in our call, you said that you try and rationalize your way out of it. Well, that's like going onto the playground alone and the bully comes up to you and you try and rationalize with the bully. What you need is to keep your friends with you every time you go on the playground. And these statements, these truths that we uncovered are those friends that you, that you take with you as you go on the playground. And the goal is to get to a place where the bully looks at you, it looks at your friends and says, it's not even worth fighting with this guy. I, I, I better go away. There's no point. And it leaves you. And so your homework is going to be that I'd like you to spend the next few weeks, do it in the morning or do it in the evening, but I want you to actually, before you go to bed, I want you to actually say these statements out loud, and I'll send these statements over to you. Um, I want you to look yourself in the mirror, and I want you to say it out loud to yourself that I can drop this whenever I want. Um, it is easy to drop this. I'm not even going to look at it anymore. These statements are going to have a powerful effect in counteracting the brainwashing where you have started to believe that there is no way out. Because you already are free. You've already escaped from the trap. If you're not PMOing right now on our call, and I don't think you are, then you are free. You already see through the lies. You know that PMO has no benefit to it. You know that it drops your confidence, that your head hurts, that you can't focus on studying based on it. Um, you read all other people's experiences and you know how bad it is. You're an Orthodox Christian. You know how it doesn't help your moral standing. It, and it won't help you with your relationships. You're single right now, but whenever you get into relationships, you know it's bad. And this is the process that you can use to really drop and escape from the PMO trap. Examine a belief. See if it's true. See if there's any advantage to holding on to it. And if there isn't, you can drop it like it's a pen in your hand. All the stress comes from holding on to that pen tighter and tighter and tighter and believing that the pen is part of you. The pen has never been a part of you. You just have to open your hand, turn your hand upside down, and let the pen drop. So tell me, in this moment, do you feel more capable or less capable of escaping from this PMO trap? Definitely more capable. Okay. So in this moment, can you just choose to drop your PMO addiction as well? Yes, I can, and I'm quite happy doing that. <laughs> That's really how easy it is. Are there other beliefs that are coming up right now for you? Are there other um, anything else that you're that this bully is coming up and, and yelling at you? Is there any any other false beliefs that that are coming up for you right now that we can work? Another on? one might be the 
the fear of withdrawal pains and uh, fear of uh, future urges. Okay. So this fear of withdrawal symptoms. Okay. So how would you phrase that? That, um, yeah. How would you try and phrase that? Well, feel of fear of that uh, feeling in your chest when you are uh, really horny and you want to release mm -hmm. this tension through PMO. So uh, a way of saying that might be, if I don't release, I'm going to explode. Yes, yes, exactly. okay. Okay. If I don't release, I will explode. So let's go through the same process again. Is it true? No, definitely not. Definitely not. And how do you act out when you actually believe that it's true? Well, you panic and you try to fight the urge, but uh, there is no fight. There is no winning in that fight. Exactly. We think that um, these urges come and this panic comes, and therefore I have to a PMO. I have to watch porn and, and have my orgasm at the end of it. But the actual thing is it's the belief that if I don't release, I will explode. It's, it's that belief itself that's causing the panic. It's that belief itself that's causing these urges. Not the other way around. We think, we feel the panic, and then we tell ourselves that, oh, if I don't release, I'm going to explode. But if anything, the mechanism is the other way around. You have the belief, and it causes the panic. So what would happen if you no longer believed this? Well, absolutely nothing bad. I could... Uh use that energy to do anything else. Okay. So if you know this belief is not true, you know that this belief is causing you more harm with giving you panic, it's making you fight, it's actually keeping you in the trap. And there's nothing bad from letting this belief go. Then in this moment, can you just choose to drop this belief? Yes. Like the pen in your hand, just choose to drop it. Yeah, I can. I can do that. Um, and tell me, what might be a good uh, reversal of this belief? What might be the actual truth here? The actual truth is that my body doesn't need it. Nothing, absolutely nothing will happen if I don't do it. Quite the opposite. I'll feel better and better as the day, days go by. That's great. Can you, like, you can already feel a lot more positive as you say it. Yeah, I feel yeah, better definitely. and better. Yeah. Um, and so that is an, an additional piece of your homework. And once again, I'll send these statements over to you that, that you just, um, that you just came across, but I love it. You said that the truth is my body doesn't need it. Nothing will happen if I don't do it. I feel better and better as days go by. This is how you fight again. This is how you add to your friends um, when you go on to the school playground and the bully comes up to you. Um, so yeah, this is wonderful. Um, how do you feel right now? I feel quite happy and I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. That's all there is to it. So easy, it's unbelievable. Yeah. We, over a lifetime, over five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, we get brainwashed into <laughs> believing these false beliefs. These false beliefs create a void in our life with stress, with boredom, with anxiety, with loneliness. And, um, we try and fill this void with things like porn, with things like internet addiction, with all of these other addictions. And all we really have to do is see through the lies of these beliefs and then we can drop it. Um, this is, that's, that's really how easy it is. So I'm glad you got a lot out of this. But I, I, my homework for you is that A, I'd like you, I'm going to share these statements with you. I'd like you to 
say them out loud to yourself, whether it be in the morning or evening or maybe twice a day, uh, because it'll take a bit of time. Um, you have a 10-year addiction, so it'll take a bit of time to reverse this, these lies that you've started to believe. Um, the second thing is I'd like you to check in with me. I'd like to know how you're doing. Um, All right. Because I, I want to make sure that you truly are free from this trap. And um, yeah, check in with me. Let me know how it goes. I'm here for you. And um, that's pretty much it. All right, man. Thank you. Thanks very much for doing this. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode of Filling the Void. It would mean a lot to me if you went ahead and left a great review, a great rating on iTunes podcast, on Google podcasts, or wherever you listen to this podcast. And of course, if you want to learn more about these ideas, go on amazon.com and look up Quit Porn Easily. It's an ebook that I wrote, which has the best of my coaching um, summarized. It's only 99 cents. And of course, if you are looking for coaching, go on to quitporneasily.com slash coaching. That's quitporneasily.com slash coaching. Get personalized coaching about your porn addiction, your internet addiction. I'm here for you. Um, thanks everyone for listening and I will see you next time.